Getting the results you want in Stable Diffusion can be tricky and oftentimes you will need to break down your prompts to see what impact they are having on your overall image allowing you to understand what changes need to be made. But thankfully this can be easily accomplished with Prompt Matrix which allows you to see the impact of individual prompts on your generated image in a matrix layout. But like the video and give it to me bite sized. So in order to use Prompt Matrix, you need two elements at minimum in your prompt structure. The first is the description of your prompt that will be used across your images as the base. And the second is the variable or prompt you want to test on top of that base. For example, you could type in as your base, a woman, and then for the prompts you want to test, let's use red hair and blue eyes. We can see that we get a woman across our images, but now we can see the impact of the red hair and blue eye prompts in a variety of combinations. The option put variable parts at the start of the prompt will place the variables between the horizontal lines at the start of the prompt rather than the end before using the rest of our prompt description. So if we use our previous prompt with this option selected, it will generate a series of images by using red hair and blue eyes before using the rest of our prompt, a woman. The impact of this can be seen in the generation data when the positions have been reversed. Use different seed for each picture will ensure that each generated photo is based on a different seed that's either an increment of a randomly selected seed or an increment of the seed you selected. This is because by default, images generated with prompt matrix will all use the same seed. For example, if I generate a series of images on our old prompt and minus one for the seed, it will first of all choose a random seed for the first photo and then increment the rest of them by plus one. And if I manually choose my seed, it will use that one for the first photo and then increment the rest of them by plus one. This is useful for if you're searching for a more varied set of images. The option select prompt will let you choose whether to run this test for the positive prompts or the negative prompts. In our previous examples, I showed you how this worked on the positive prompts but if we run it for the negative prompts, we can see it breaks down our image with and without fast negative two, which is one of our embeddings. Select joining char or character will let you determine whether the horizontal line used to capture prompts are replaced with either a comma or a space and is used to determine the vocabulary of the prompt. For example, if I typed in a woman who looks horizontal line cross as my prompt and select comma, then the horizontal line will be replaced with a comma resulting in an image generated from the prompt a woman who looks comma cross which could indicate a woman looking and a cross as a separate object if i use space however we'll get a prompt a woman who looks cross which could determine a facial expression this can be seen quite easily in the generation data where we have either a comma or a space being used in place of the horizontal line depending on the option we select Grid margins will determine how much spacing each generated photo has on the matrix grid. I like to go with a value between 25 to 50, just so there's some breathing room between images, but you can go from zero to 500, depending on your preferences. But that's the bite-sized or prompt matrix, which has hopefully helped you find some utility in this fantastic tool. Before you leave, I want to shout out our supporters over on Patreon and thank everyone for their support. Do drop a like before you leave the building and of course subscribe. This is Bite Size Genius and I hope you enjoyed.